the national leader taught it. But in designing the program, there were two immovable objects that had to be brought together. I'm teaching, so, and I'm designing, so I said, cannot change the principle, cannot dilute the principle, cannot water down, cannot, you know, principle must be taught clearly. That's my desire. And the national leader, who is a member of parliament, and now a cabinet minister in the government, his demand, I cannot make anybody upset. Because I'm a politician, my salary is based on their taxes, I'm going to get into trouble. So we have to bring these two together. You know, teach the principle, don't make people upset. Those are the two things. But first let me talk a little bit about the plan to have a national impact. Um, so this is the, the, the ministry where our national leader works, the Ministry of Cooperative and Poverty Alleviation. And the day before we had the program, we had an Asian leaders meeting in our Peace Embassy building. And uh, this gentleman on the right, he's really supporting us. And holding the placard is the national leader of Nepal. His name is Honorable Teknat Dekal. This is our Peace Embassy building in Kathmandu. When Dr. Walsh arrived, the government of Nepal gave him this car mm -hmm. to ride around it. Wow. And they also gave him a police van behind. You can see the, the uh, truck. So he had a police escort. Mm -hmm. And the car, his car was used by Dr. Ki Moon when he came to Nepal. Wow. So that's the level that we're working at in Nepal. We had a student program uh, at the Army Officers Club the day before our ILC, this is the green room. Wherever Angelina goes, he has an army man following him, security. It's just, uh, he, he has to do that. Uh, we had a program called the Role of Youth in Nation Building, and we had all together 1,500 students attended. Uh, we couldn't have had more, but the hall was full already. We have a martial arts program that does a uh, competition on a national level. This is our national uh, leader, Honorable Ekmetik Hall, entertainment. I gave a presentation. This is the uh, CART leader for Asia. And then we began the ILC the next day. So we did a student program, and then now we're working with the older people. Uh, this is lighting the lamp. The, we inaugurated our session and we released the Nepal version of Father's Autobiography at the same time. Yeah. So on the diet, we have the current Vice President, the former Prime Minister, India, Thailand, Sri Lanka, China, <coughs> all types of people are there. The gentleman in the hat is the Vice President <coughs> of uh, Nepal, and we had about 700 people this program. We were limited by budget because we bring people we've got to feed them and that costs money. So we couldn't do so many. This is the Vice President of Nepal, our national leader. We gave away 64 Ambassador for Peace Awards. These are the different sessions uh, that we had. Uh, these are the political leaders. Uh, we have the current Deputy Prime Minister and all the political party leaders came through the program to discuss the politics and how to move forward in Nepal. Then we had a women's program uh, at the end, and uh, lots of people, this is my wife, India, Dr. Walsh, Indonesia, United Nations, UNESCO was there. Like that. I'm going quickly because we've done programs before. And on his left is the uh, Minister of Defense. Then we had the last session uh, was the inauguration of the Able Women UN. Uh, again, I think Caroline was there when they did that in July in uh, Korea. And I think we the people come again and again and again and they really like to come and they like, like to be with us. Uh, my job is to teach and I don't want to take anything away from the importance of the Continental Director. Dr. Young is really important, whether it's Reverend Song or Dr. Young, that vertical alignment is very, very important. And our national leader is an extraordinary leader, and I'm there to support him. I tell the Nepalese people, I'm 
a coach on the sideline. You guys are playing on the field on the sideline. So how do we teach the principles? I'll share with you a short way that we do it. We've done it like this before. I asked the question, when did we learn to fly? Well, from history, we know that it was in 1903. The Wright brothers, troops, and things like that. But how do you build these? You need principles. So that's what we want to talk about. Two principles. And if you get them right, you can build anything you want to. This is that we take this, these paradigms, we apply it to the fall of man, we apply it to history of restoration, we apply it all the way through. So when you build a building, the first is the pillar. And then afterwards, you build the beam. And once you get the pillars and beams, you can build anything you want. What is this going to be? I don't know. What could it be? It could be a school, an office building, it could be a factory, it could, you can do it anyway. Right? Anyway, it's like the three great blessings, uh, be fruitful and multiply, those are the first two. And after you get to be fruitful and multiply, then you can have dominion. You can do what you want to do. So we just talk about that. The first one is mind and body, and I'll go very quickly because we know this already. Man has mind and body, animals have instinct, plants have response mechanisms, and in the molecular world it's natural law. So that's not new, but this is kind of like science. The important point that needs to be emphasized here is that in the animal, plant, and molecular world, the relationship between the mind and body is unlearned. It's instinctual, it's automatic, it's pre-programmed, but not in human beings. This is the uniqueness that we have. We have responsibility to reunite the mind and body. How do we do that? Well, let's look at it a little bit more. The relationship between the kinds of education to be smart and to be good. Because we haven't come up with a definition of goodness that we can all agree on, we kind of ignored number two, and where our education system is just going to be based on number one. We'll just teach kids to be smart, and we won't worry about character. And that's a problem, too. So this lecture is going to kind of identify what does it mean to be good. Is there a universal standard of goodness that can be applied in all cultures and in all religions. If there is, if we can find that universal standard, bam, we can begin to change the world. Build on the heritage that you have. Whatever your religion, whatever your tradition, build on that. Make it better. Make yourself a better person. And through Father who is teaching, you can do that. So how do we do that? If the principles are universal, it must be logical, reasonable, rational, scientific. It must be. Without that, it's not going to work. And it has to be religious. But it cannot favor any religion. It must be interreligious. And that's the key, uh, is to bring these two ideas together. Our continental director, Dr. Young, has asked us to read Father the Divine Principle 100 times. See? To understand this tradition. In fact, it can be a better seat. Because you can see that same teaching in the Gita and the Dhammapada and the Bible. And it's also the Quran. Do not expect in getting any increase. So you cannot be a politician. You know, mm -hmm. so that's <laughs> Okay. The very first verse of the Quran, because I lived in Pakistan eight years and I know this well. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Bismillah ar Rahman, Bismillah ar Rahim. And the gracious and merciful God, the nature of God too. Teaching, mental teaching. To nourish your mind, there is nothing better than make the desire for you. It's actually amazing that all religions are trying to focus on this one point. So, Father has taught this as well. A true life is a life in which we abandon our private desires and live for the public good. This is all religions. Abandon the right desire. No desire for yourself. Okay? So let's take that idea. We're going to abandon our private desires, and that's what it means to be mature. I have this example of what does it mean to be mature? Well, here in Austria, what is the age of maturity? 18. 18. 18. 18. Young people, I'm 17 and a 
now. I'm almost mature. I'm 18 now, Polly. Then he can't tell me what to do anymore. No. <laughs> but immaturity based on age. What is age? When you were born, the earth goes around the sun 18 times, and I mature. That makes no sense at all. Because there's no responsibility. There's a principle of goodness that is universal. This is what Father says. To realize, and this is a, especially focusing on all of us, the teenagers, even in the ideal world, they're going to struggle with it. To realize that we exist for the sake of others is the great achievement that changes our lives. This is very important because it means we can now teach this to all people without hesitating. Parents, we we'll go through quickly, positive and negative, put on the crown, we know all that. The point is this. In the molecular world, they exist in pairs so that they can exist. The centrifugal and centrifugal forces and the interaction, we know that. In the animal world, the purpose of the pair system is procreation and pleasure. So, this is a honeybee. They got a photograph of a honeybee making. The queen bee is uh, horizontal and the drone, the male, is the vertical. And when they separate, the male sexual organ stays inside the female and it tears the abdomen. And so when they separate, the male drops to the ground dead. And so the scientists call it sexual suicide because all these males are trying to mate with this female, the queen bee, and after they die. What are they doing? <laughs> this is a praying mantis. You can go on the internet, hopefully not. And when the praying mantis has sex and as they're dismounting, then the woman will turn her head around, bite the head of the man, and eat the body. Wow. Quite serious. <laughs> you know, in the animal world, that's what it means. In the animal world, the purpose of sex is conception. That's the highest purpose. Uh, we know that. In the fish, father loves the salmon fish, and they're normally silver, and when they swim back upstream, they turn red, spawn, die, and the, the, the baby fish eats the parent's body, and they call it Big Bang spawning. Okay. In human sex and animal sex, animals can die after they have sex. Yes, it happens. <laughs> what about people? <laughs> My wife and I are married for 30 years. <coughs> and we have two kids. <coughs> and she's still alive, and I'm still alive. <laughs> 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 <It's a little>. <laughs> <laughs> when I heard Anna Marie said we get to take three two months, three cycles, and then we send them to slaughter. <laughs> we took ten years. <laughs> give me two books. I'll give you two books again. Two things together, right? All right, let's put it together. One year later, two years later, you look at that and the glue starts to dry and turn yellow and crack, right? So then you can easily break it apart. So, what is the purpose of human sexuality? We're supposed to be glued together one time and be together forever? No. That glue has to be again and again and again. <laughs> and sometimes you have the children, and even when you don't have the children, glue and glue, and when you go to the spirit world, God made sex the most exciting, emotionally powerful experience for a reason. What if there is, we have super glue, right? So what if somebody invented super sex? <laughs> then that would jeopardize this relationship. If God says, no, this, if there's something more pleasurable than this, then this union would be in jeopardy, vulnerable. God says, no. <clears throat> I'm going to make sex the most enjoyable so that you can enjoy it forever. And that's the purpose. So
So let's see what the father and mother have told us. Mother says this, and father, of course, is thinking, we married in order to be to be glued together. Who we marry in order to get glued together to become a God. And that glue is sex. And that's why it's holy and sacred. That's why it's eternal. It's not going to be So let's look at the different verses. In the uh, Bible, the very first chapter, <coughs> the first book, God created the heaven. It's a totally communist country. In 2009, uh, 2008, when the father's helicopter crash? Eight 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 eight. Eight. Nepal had just had their first election a year later. Now they were going to elect the president. The prime minister, who was the largest political party, was the Maoist, the communist. And they had a candidate. There was one candidate for uh, the Maoist, the communist candidate, and one democratic candidate. There was a runoff, and these were the final two. And it was very, very close. Uh, they need 300 votes out of 600, something like 301 votes. And so the head of the Democratic Party called our national leader, who is the head of our family party, called him into his home, his private home. Still, it's too busy. He said, come with me. They went inside his bedroom. No one was there. And he said, Eknath, because he's much older and Eknath is younger, I have one question. Do you want Nepal to be a communist country or a democratic country? And they not said, Democratic. So the leader of the Democratic Alliance said, okay, I'm a big party, but you're a small party. I want you to get the small parties together and vote as one block and get me as many votes as you can. So he brought the parties together. We got a coalition of 10 votes. And the Democratic presidential candidate won by four votes. That same day, Father's helicopter crash happened in Korea. So I, I have a whole presentation to show the linkage between Nepal and Korea. It's astounding. This is one of them. When Father came to Nepal on his tour in 2005, the same day that Father gave his speech to launch UPF, exactly the same day, the people that have been fighting for more than a decade came together and signed an MOU. All the political parties came together because we want peace. The same day that Father came to Nepal and spoke, many correlations. Helicopter crashes. <coughs> Nepal and Korea are, uh, they're kind of like <clears throat> linked together. So in Korea, Father's helicopter crash was a life and death situation without shedding blood, life was saved. We say the same thing in Nepal. This political process between communism and democracy was a life and death situation. Without shedding blood, it became, they couldn't dominate. Even by part of it. So we went through everything. We went through, this is the parasitic principle, we went through the spirit world, we went through human responsibility, we went through the life, we went through the fall of man, we went through restoration, and we even went through history. So we had to develop an entire new history, not entirely, we had to build on the history of the Father uh, and look where is the history of Buddhism in this central history, what we call it correlate history. Where is the history of Islam? Where is the history of Hinduism? And we were able to bring them in, so people are quite excited. When we teach the fall of man, your specific question, we don't teach it simply as uh, you know, sexuality, which it is. But prior to that, it was a mind-body problem. Uh, Adam and Eve lost the vertical alignment with God. Now Father has even clarified that, that you know, we have to go back, not just before the fall, but go back before the temptation when Adam and Eve were like 14 years old. But anyway, the first part of the problem was this mind-body problem or lack of faith. And so we build on that and say, all religions kind of recognize this. If you look at Christianity, it was a lack of faith. If you look at Buddhism, they say it was, you know, Selfish craving. Uh, if you look at Hinduism, they call that spiritual ignorance. You know, what did the individual do that was wrong? And we say, okay, all religions somehow look at the individual and say there's a big problem there. What Father Movement does is that problem of the individual is actually multiplied 
and then look at the human sexuality problem. And we bring in lots and lots of Hindu quotes. But see, you just like that, you know that, that's the letter for the Bible. And you're quoting the Bible, and you are teaching in Christianity. So every time there's a Bible verse, then there's a Quran verse that matches that, then you know, Dhammapada, Bhagavad Gita, the Jain tradition, the Adi Graph, and Confucius. And we try to have all of them together. We quote one, we quote six. But we don't quote them at all and let the principle stand by itself. So we've gone through the whole principle, 24 lectures like that. Yes. Next question was here, sorry. Two questions. The first one is. Here's the Prime Minister of was just elected as a new Prime Minister. He made a public announcement I'm not going to need any ambassadors or any foreign dignitaries because I've got to get my cabinet put together. Please don't ask. And the next day, Dr. Kim was going to be a because the United Nations have the opportunity to yeah. connect them wherever they go. The, this is the uh, deputy the prime minister. These are education programs. Uh, this is our peace industry building. Uh, this is the college management. We have to invite college students there. Another peace industry building program. We have Nagar and Chitawan, Nepal Ranj, Kikor, Kathmandu. In Java, we have like 400 people, most universities, on television. On television again, there are programs. This is a, we send people to education programs in the Philippines. These are ambassadors for peace. We'll have a machine together. Let's talk together without the income. Uh, then Dr. Young uh, had the Sundo K champion come. Then his brother came to teach. And we invite, not members, but we invite ambassadors for peace. This is an internal meeting, two fathers, live course. <laughs> Dr. Young's brother came, and this gentleman here. This is Dr. Young's brother. He is the former Army Police Chief, and he is the former uh, member, Speaker of the House, and he is the former Army General. So these are the people. When we have a program, we just everybody come. Why? You know? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I understand that. Because the President of the Angels came, uh, the Vice President. These are all the IP people. Then when the Little Angels came, we just didn't have the event. But we said, let's interact. So we went to a school. This was a little angel school. So the little angels from Korea. At that time, Dr. Butterai, who's now Prime Minister, got the Ambassador for Peace Award. Then we have topic programs on TV. There's another television program that we did, Marriage and Family, working with the United Nations. We had programs, the United Nations Day of Peace, we had programs in eight cities, not one. They called the one who report to New York. So it's an opportunity. Let's People that are in other cities can't come to Kathmandu, but we can take the program to the other cities. You had a day of family, Africa, Africa Day in Nepal, Africa Day. <laughs> 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 you know, International Day of Women, UN related events, uh, the International Harmony Week, uh, giveaway ambassadors for peace. When we did the International Day of Families, we did it in 1,500 cities of Nepal, not one. Because it's an opportunity to teach and interact and come follow up. Um, the the seminars and programs. This is our training center, our national training center. Our latest program, this is me, Rotary Club from different countries, Japan or Taiwan or Thailand. Or any program is just so that we have kind of a practical approach to this one that we, it is very nice to this curation approach. I want to see what it is practically in this country. I know it's not, I don't think it's a complication in martial arts. Like that. And we were even uh, sending missionaries now to other Asian nations. So, Krishna Kali on the right, who's the leader uh, on the left, the leader of India right now. And the other two gentlemen are the missionaries down in Sri Lanka. How many people are in India? In the top? 30 million. 30 million. 13. 13. 30 million. You have a second question. Yeah, um, like I really like the like, Kalka. Kalka, the word Kalka, Avatar means God. It means literally dirty Messiah. Dirt is Kalka. So it means a dirty Messiah. But the dirt is coming from heaven. But it really explains bottom. You're going to come in and get messed up and, and solve the problem. You're not going to fix things, you know. From a glass cage and tell people to do it, but he can involve himself and his own family, and they're going to be hurt, and it's going to be a lot of different pain involved in healing the process, but he's going to do it engaging in that. 
the Kalki Avatar, he is supposed to come from heaven, but he will be born on earth. He's going to bring a new seed, start a new lineage, he's going to get married, and his nickname is the Great Chastisement. Father <laughs> <Probably. laughs> So, before we take somebody to Korea, we give them this. Father is the chastiser. So when they hear Father, <laughs> you know, okay, now he's fulfilling his role. <laughs> <laughs> they not separation. So they're closer together. <laughs> and you look at what it means to be coming out of the house. And we connect their histories also. So we don't just teach the Christian history, but we teach. Buddhist history, the Hindu history, the Islamic history, and we bring them together so that they can't wiggle away. And we say, we didn't ask you to convert, but we want you to fulfill. If you're a Buddhist, then you should look at the Father as my true Buddha. You're not converting. You're fulfilling. If you're a Muslim, you should look at the Father as the Imam. And if you're a Christian, you look at him as the second coming. And then, oh, I'm fulfilling what it means. And so, our national leader, he says, I'm a Hindu unificationist. I'm a Christian unificationist. And that, that just to say unificationist, is misunderstood. And it kind of denies their heritage. No, I'm a Hindu unificationist. It kind of brings the two together. Like we had the trouble with, you know, the before, what was it? Uh, Subject, object, position, and we couldn't explain them, so we got subject, partner, object, partner, we put two words together, hyphenate them, and it gives a clearer, more accurate picture. So let's hyphenate it. Hindu unification. Muslim unification. So you're not denying the tradition. Is it all three kinds of lessons? Absolutely. Yeah, because that's part of changing. The thing is, if you want to be a good tennis player, what are you going to do? You're going to hire a coach. And if you want to be really, really good, you're going to get the best coach that you can. So if you want to live for the sake of others, who is the one person that has been the most sacrificial? Let's just look at it in terms of how much sleep you have. Who is the person that has slept the least in your life? That means you must be sacrificial. It's hard. So that's father. I mean, you need to get closer and closer to father to be a better and better person. The father's not just looking at a teacher, but he's like a coach. He wants to be a parent. He wants to be that close to you. You have to let him be. Yes, we yes we want them to experience blessing and change. You know, they change the uh, attitudes and change the Basically, <coughs> but if you get into changing religion, they think if I change my name, then I solve the problem. So the goal is that you should go to the blessing and receive the blessing. Absolutely. Yes. And they want to. For the older people, it's natural to rededicate their marriage. They're doing it among peers and young people. Yes. Last time there was 1,400 couples together. We, had a good and we, did, we couldn't find a place big enough. They had to rent one place and have three overflow rooms with close to the TV to do it. It was a monotheistic Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. The Eastern religions are not. You can be the one God, no God, 100,000 gods. It's okay. Well, why is that? Well, they're dealing with different issues. The Eastern, the Western religions, they're dealing with part of the problem. There are two causes, two results of the fall. Sin and fallen nature. So the Western religions are dealing with sin. How do you do Because sin means I'm separated from God. And then what is the nature of God? Is God sinful? And why does evil exist? If God is good, and who is God? And how can I reconnect to God? And I need the messianic person, and I need God. So the purpose of the Western religions is to address the issue of sin. The purpose of the Eastern religions is not to deal with sin, it's to deal with fallen nature. And the fallen nature means my mind and body are disunited. Well, if you want to unite your mind and body, then you meditate and pray and hold the shanti, and you discipline yourself, and God doesn't matter, but I've got to discipline myself, my mind and body, and I'll train my mind and body to punish it so that I can control my mind and body. That's the Eastern religion. Father says we need both. Let's take another example of the crucifixion of Jesus. Islam says Jesus shouldn't have been crucified. 
Christianity says it's the center of their religion. How do you unite that? The Father talks about Jesus. He says two things. He says the same thing. Lord of glory, Lord of suffering. Lord of glory, and the, and the sacrifice that Jesus made is a Christian tradition. The Lord of suffering, you know, by the Lord of suffering is a Christian tradition. The Lord of glory, where Jesus should not have been crucified, that's Islamic teaching. So we bring them together. And did you get that? Should I repeat that? Yeah. They just deal with two aspects of the same thing when we look at history. And so we try to bring them together, both so that they can come without you know, jeopardizing their heritage or their tradition. The principle is big enough to bring them all together. So when we were in Mindanao, I taught that. I said, okay, let's teach Christianity because Jesus shouldn't have been crucified and uh, uh, Jesus had to be crucified and Islam says he shouldn't have been. Father says both. So then Father's teaching can bring Christian and Muslim together on the issue that is inviting them to come out and come out and come Father's teaching can do that. But what about the reincarnation issue of reincarnation? We explain what reincarnation tries to explain. That because I I can remember past lives uh, very vividly, I can record them and go check it out, and my recording of events in other cities is actually accurate. That's true. So how do we deal with that? what we do is we explain reincarnation through returning resurrection and explain it more clearly than what they can with their understanding of just reincarnation. Is anybody convinced when they hear the principle one time? Mm-hmm. Again and again and again. But it is it's an alternative. It doesn't deny you're wrong. That's what we don't want to do. So you're wrong and this is wrong and this is why this is wrong and I'm going to show you all the reasons why you're wrong. No. We can say, okay, at least the phenomenon of child prodigy and recollection of events in other cities you've never been to, those phenomena are true. So we acknowledge, we, we affirm where we can. But what we have is another explanation of what has happened. The next thing makes sense. Um, you yeah, know, of course you have to repeat again, again, like a parent. Parents have to repeat when they raise their children. Again, 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 again. What well, is it because of the quick Indian movement. In Nepal was colonized by England. And then in North India, India was colonized by England. And uh, then in order to get self-autonomy, they had to get rid of the British. And it meant British meant Christianity. And it meant this, this mentality of solving my problem by getting rid of my enemy. And then anybody that's not inside or part of India is like an enemy. So Nepal was never colonized by anyone. They were always independent. Even India tried to colonize. Even the British tried to colonize and they were defeated. So I think that's an important element of history. And so Nepal doesn't have this antagonism towards Christianity or antagonism towards foreigners. To get a visa and stay in India is very, 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 very difficult. Very difficult. Very difficult. For a foreigner, it's yes. extremely difficult. And even once you get in to try and operate, the hamstring that they put on mm-hmm. moving money back and forth and taxes, and mm-hmm. it's reported, it's ridiculous. That's not in the yeah. So many foreign com- companies that want to work in India, especially you know bringing money in, they'll set it up in Nepal because the Nepalese can go to India without a visa. So the Nepalese can go there, they can own land, they can vote. The only thing they can do is become the president of India. So our big movement in Nepal is actually the key to working in India. So Dr. Young last year went to 35 states to make holy ground in all 35 states and he's planning to send more Nepalese to India. Um, uh, what, was, what, was, no, what was the point of the starting point of the state? This was like Nepal. A Nepal you know? When did it, like, it make it, you know? But it came on a lot of sacrifice. Uh, first of all, <coughs> Rainer Schmidl was the first uh, German missionary who stayed the longest. And then during that time, the national leader, who was uh, originally in Korea for a while and coming back on his way to America to attend UTS, was killed, murdered. His murdered body was thrown in the river. He was blessed. 
and at that time. So that sacrifice of that member is well known. So people, when they meet our movement and they understand and they hear that story. The other uh, important point is good leadership. And I'm talking about Dr. Young and especially Honorable Eknaf. When I met Honorable Eknaf the first time, uh, my decision, what I wanted to do, is to support him as much as I can, as a foreigner, as a missionary. So I'm very clear that my job is to coach. I'm a coach on the sideline. I, I repeat that. That's my position. These guys, it's their country, it's their the players. He's a very good organizer. He's a very good in working with people. Even with very difficult situations, he doesn't make enemies. He is a kind of a, it's a, call it a political skill or just a natural human instinct that he has, along with the fact that he was a Brahmin before, so he's high caste. Uh, his father served in the army, the Gorka soldier during World War II. Before that, his grandfather was the priest in the, in the palace for the king. So he's got that heritage, but he's also got that uh, individual character. It's like when you look at predestination, he's got the five different characters. His leadership, I think, has been key uh, to it. And then I'm just trying to support it through educational initiatives. That's my role. So that he, as I like said before, he don't make people angry when you talk on TV. That's because that's how he works politically. And in mind, why well, I have to teach the when I'm not going to deal. So we wrote it, and I'll do it again, and we went through several drafts before we finally came out with the principle that we found on in addition to that, the Nepal character is a very natural vertical tradition. It's honoring parents. So when Father says something, the Nepal mind is, we have to do it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need to do it, we can it. I've been in leader meetings all the time. Father says this, and people don't say, well, this is why we can, and it's too short, and we don't have enough money. All that is there. They don't talk about that. They say, how can we do it? And what happened, the reason we went on national television is because Father said we have to teach, like, what was, it, what was the goal? To teach principles to 12,000 people or something like that. And we started doing that. That's why we had these big workshops, ODP workshops, and we brought people for seven days. And it's very expensive. And bringing these kids, you know, from all over the country, where are they going to sleep? How are you going to feed them? Seven days is a big, big thing. And then Father said, more, more, more. So suddenly, God, we can't do any more. But we didn't say we couldn't do, we just said, how can we do more? And then, well, we can teach on national television. Oh, yeah, okay. And that's how that got started. The other character of Nepal is, is very similar to Korea. In Korea, there's a saying in the Korean language that Korea is the shrimp among the fighting whales. It's a small country, China, Russia, Japan. So whenever these countries fight, they trample on Korea. So it's the shrimp among the fighting whales. In Nepal, the same yeah. idea, they say we are the sweet potato stuck between two stones, China and India. Communism and democracy, the little right in the middle. What it means is the character of the people. <laughs> Injustice comes, whether it's China, Russia, or Japan, or India or China. Injustice is put upon you by a big neighbor who's a bully. What do you do? can't do anything. The first thing is, is, again, with our national leader, he is very clear. Um, because he's got this knack, you know, this 